Good morning, Book Fighters. Today is Monday, December 27th, and I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, so I'm going to do questions first, uh, just because I only remember one of them, and that was Katie's, and she asked to see something from my childhood, but unfortunately, I am now in... Scotland. I didn't, I wasn't born here. My mum moved here like four years ago and I stayed uh, in Birkenhead where I lived and I started living with my nan and now obviously I'm, I live in London. Um, so, but for the last kind of four years I've been coming here for Christmas uh, to Aberdeen, like in the hills of Scotland. And um, so, really, there's nothing from my childhood here. There isn't my old room. You know, I don't have that childhood house anymore. So, really, just to say that I I really can't answer your question. And also, Katie, can't help noticing you didn't read Ode to Kirihito. I did tweet you the title, so I don't know when you're going to get around to that, but I'm eagerly awaiting it. Okay, so there was hardly any videos this week. Katie and Sarah posted on Saturday, and Julie didn't post, and it was just like a really hectic week, and I completely understand that. It was the holidays, uh, and then I know there's going to be problems this week as well, but do you know what? It's fine. It is the season of goodwill, and we can start again strong in the new year. Okay, so this week I read Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk, or Funke. Um, I'm going to call her Funk, because I like to say that. Uh, and it was suggested by Julia, and I thought, actually, it was just a really apt book for me to have read this week, given that for Christmas this year, I got one of these. Um, I got a Kindle, and what's really strange about reading um, Ink Heart this week was that it's kind of a book about the love of books, and not just the words, but as Sarah said, which in the review that I went and watched again, because I was reading this, like, it's about, like, the smell of books and the look of books and the cover and the actual things that books are rather than just the words that they contain. And yet here I am with this newfangled device, which, you know, does strip books down to the words and the stories that they contain. So I thought that was really interesting, and it definitely made me realise that having a Kindle does not mean that I will stop buying books by any means. It might very well mean that I buy less books, but I still do like books. Like, I, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine just reading off my Kindle all the time. I imagine it's going to be for train journeys and the numerous amount of coach journeys that I do and when I'm traveling and when I'm moving around and when I don't have any new books in the house. Like, you know, it, it's going to be for all of them purposes. I definitely will not stop buying physical books because actually this book reminded me how much I love them. This really is a book about just the love of books and I really loved reading it because of that. It was really well written and it was translated from German and you cannot tell. Clearly the translator has really got a hold of this story and she's worded it like just nicely. She hasn't just tried to translate it, she tries to translate it into a really good and well readable story um, which, which is more than you can ask um, from any translator. The only gripe I had with this book was the gripe, to be honest, that I had going in. Going into this book, I was kind of thinking, oh, he reads and they come out of the books, like, oh, it just sounded a bit trite to me. It didn't sit well with me. It made me feel uncomfortable. And then the kind of first 10, 15 chapters or so, where really it isn't about that at all. I just loved, I fell in love with the characters and the story. And then when the actual reading and the coming out of the, the pages and stuff start to happen, it did start to make me feel uncomfortable again. Basically, I think it's because it didn't really have any any boundaries. I don't know, there was no like reason for it. It was just something that he did. It just didn't sit well for me. Uh, but the characters and the actual story itself and the kind of thrill ride adventure that it was did overcome that. So I, I really did enjoy this book, even though that... that kind of never, I never got over that initial kind of scepticism. So this week, um, Christmas television always crops up something new every year, um, despite the endless reruns of things, and, uh, and this year they showed the first two Narnia films, they showed The Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe and Prince Caspian. Um, what I got from that was, I really love Narnia as a concept, 
but the films aren't that good. And tomorrow I'm going to see Voyage of the Dawn try to run the cinema. So I felt like I'm on a bit of a Narnia kick. I mean, for the story, um, even though the films haven't lived up uh, for me to the the greatness of the books, I've only ever read the first five books. So I'm gonna um, attempt to read you know the rest of them, um, starting from the first two though. Uh, so this week on my Kindle, uh, I'm gonna read The Magician's Nephew and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Okay guys, that's all for me this week, and Lauren, I will hopefully see you tomorrow. Oh, and Katie, just to answer your question a little bit, uh, here's a picture of, of what I see now when I come to my parents' house for Christmas.